Hello and welcome to the Voices of the Vic podcast with me, Mike Duffy, and there he is, uh, and Cameron Smart. So I'm still getting used to the uh, the new video before we, we go live, so hopefully you all heard that one last time, because well, this time, because last time I did it, I, uh, I forgot to click the button, which produced any volume, but hopefully all was well then. Um, as I say, I am here with Cameron Smart, and we are here to talk about Blackburn Rovers are visiting the Vic on Sunday. That's right. We have to wait till Sunday. Uh, I think they're honestly the most boringest weekends when we have to wait um, till Sunday for a game. But nonetheless, that's why we're here to talk about Blackburn game. We'll be joined by Ryan Hildred, who's a friend of the podcast. If anyone's been listening since we started um, way back four years ago now, I was listening to one of our uh, first ever episodes, and I cannot believe it was four years ago. Um, you'll recognise the name from when we've spoken about Blackburn before and when we've played Blackburn before. But like I say, I am joined by Cam, and those of you watching will be able to see. Firstly, Cam, I know you've been on holiday. How was your holiday? All good? Holiday was brilliant, yeah, and I've, I've had to come home to this UK <laughs> weather, which um actually not too bad. It, it's been quite yeah, hot. It's been all right today, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah I've been working in a... I've been working in East League today, and uh, I must say it was a uh, was very very nice weather. Um, but yeah, you're uh, you're glad to be back. Uh, I bet you wish you never bothered uh, watching the Stoke game on a, on your laptop over there, did you? No, yeah, that sort of put a, a bad mood on the day. I, luckily, I could get in the pool at half time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, let's touch on that quickly. I know we've already done a Stoke pod- podcast where we've uh, we've talked about it. you. Obviously, weren't on it because you weren't here. But we we sort of come to the conclusion, um, me and Ben, that the sort of general consensus after the game is, yes, it was disappointing to lose. And he, he almost had that reminiscent feeling of last season. But would you agree that there were positives to take from it? Or are you just doom and gloom? It was crap. Like, no coming back from this. No, there were positives. There were plenty. But my concern is every year, I, I look at that first away game and think, is this the year we're going to start turning up away from home as well as at home? Uh, judging off that, it's it's nowhere near what we saw against QPR and Plymouth. But there were positives, there were glimpses, and hopefully we can build on that. Absolutely. And evening to presenter Ben, who's, uh, who's watching, looking forward to the Blackburn Rovers preview. Thank you very much, Ben. Hope you're doing well, mate. Um, I, I sort of started last week's preview off um, by saying the same sort of thing, really. It's, it has been really quiet on the transfer front for Watford. And, you know, so many, I think Saturday just sort of backed it up again that we are desperate for a number nine. Um, are, are you starting to get a bit worried now, Cam? Or, or do you think it's under control? A lot of people have sort of said because of their lack of rumours, they just sort of assume that nothing's nothing's happening. Now, you know, from my point of view, the way that I'm looking at it is up and like this season, probably is the first season where they are, they are meant to be tightening leaks around the club. So those rumours won't be as free flowing. And to be fair, you know, we, we often look for stuff on, on social media and, you know, we, we, that's why we've got a bigger team now and we're, we're looking to get, um, you know, any sort of rumours that, that we can find that are credible sources, we like to put them out. And even us trying to find news, it, it is quite hard for us to find. And that might well be down to the fact that they are sort of sort of tightening those leaks in, within the club. Do you think that we, we're in for one and everything's under control or are you are you getting a bit worried? No, look, judge the window when it's over, I think. Look, yeah. I know I sound like a broken record because people are sick of hearing it, but just be patient. I, I don't think Ben Mangas sat around playing cards with Tonello and Costa and Giretta and all of them. Uh, I think there is movement going on. We're just, we're, we're not in the know, are we? We're, there's nothing being put out there, as you said. Yeah. But... Yeah, I think we'll see that number nine come in. I really hope so. There's been a few names linked. I mean, the names that are linked, not not your sort other than Kiefer Moore, not anyone that your sort of household name. I mean, 
Sharma Nicholson, he's been one that's linked. And uh, uh, I, I, I think I can say this. I, I, I'm speaking to a, a Jamaican journalist on Saturday morning about Sharma uh, in the event that we do sign him. Uh, that video may never surface, just like you thought your Livermore one wouldn't surface. But and my sorry, um, Cabo one probably won't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we did a sorry, Cabo one. We were, uh, if there's any Spanish people watching that support Las Palmas, <laughs> then uh, hit us up and you can use that video. Um, Cam will sort out the royalties with you. But um, Charmin Nicholson, Cam, I mean, firstly, do you know much about him? Is, is that someone that you could see fit in the mould as well or? I know absolutely nothing about him. <laughs> he, I mean, I know that he played at Shawa and he was quite clinical there. Hmm. But as we know, Bio was pretty clinical in his short time there. So it doesn't mean a lot. He's um he's not featured for Spartak Moscow since the end of last season. He, he hasn't been there in pre-season and he hasn't been in any of the league games. So I think he, he could be on the move, couldn't he? Yeah, well, you know, it could be a number of things, but potentially he could be one of the ones that we're, uh, we're sort of in for. Uh, there was a, a bit of news breaking today. With, uh, looks like we've got a, uh, a vacuum bio fan in the, in the building, Geordie, Geordie Wax. Um, we'll, try and, we'll try and keep the, uh, the bio talk as positive as possible if we need to. Um, but yeah, the, the, there was a rumour that was sort of come out today, which I think was quite and like quickly put to bed about a substantial bid being made. Um, I mean, the, the the player that was named was the uh, the Danish striker from Preston North End, but uh, it doesn't look like them. There's sort of any truth to that. So this is why I suppose the transfer rumours at the end of the day, and you, some can be trusted, some can't. But I think we just need to wait. I I, I said the other day on on a podcast that I firmly believe that. They know that Ishmael needs that player. Ishmael will be saying, look, I need a number nine. I need someone to fit the system. And I firmly believe he'll get his player. Uh, is it frustrating that we've had to wait this long? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I'm a little bit annoyed. But at the end of the day, the transfer window is open till the end of August. So, you know, the scouts, the, the, the people working in the transfer department will use every second and every minute that they can get. Um, and it also gives, a, just to play devil's advocate, it does give the, the team and Ishmael chance to see the team that he's got playing the way that he does, and it will be more obvious to, as to what you know what we need. Uh, and I think at the moment, I know we've just said that um, we're going to try and keep the talk positive about him, but he might work his socks off, Cam, but Bio, Bio's not the answer up top, is he? No, uh, look, I have a little bit of faith in him because I think, yeah, yeah, I think he will score goals if he does play a lot. But I mean, I don't know if this is too outlandish to say, but I think if we had a decent striker up front, he'd be on five goals already with the chances Bios had. Yeah, I I I think that's fair to say. Yeah, yeah, just I like him, but he needs to start taking the um the chances rather than, you know, one in four. Yeah, and also, you know, to on, on the other side uh, of things, he perhaps didn't quite get the service that he, he he perhaps would have wanted to at Stoke. I think Stoke was a very frustrating game. You know, the build-up wasn't as quick and that killer pass from loser wasn't there. You know, granted, teams are starting to wisen up now and they're doubling up on him. So, you know, it will get very frustrating for loser, but... If he if he shows the class that he did against QPR, then he should have no problem really. But um, yeah, you know it's uh, it it is very very frustrating. Bradley Dack being mentioned here, Cam obviously left Blackburn, and we'll we'll speak to to Ryan about him when he joins shortly. Um, is that someone you would have taken a punt on? Well, he's made a glass, so <laughs> he'd he'd fit right he'd fit right in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But do I want someone with, with no hamstrings running about in the Ishmael system? I don't know. He's a quality player. Mm. Just, uh, yeah. Where did he end up going? Sunderland. Sunderland. Yeah, yeah he, uh, right. he linked back up with um, he linked back up with Tony Mowbray. At Sunderland. Yeah, that's so, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a he's a good player. Just I'd I'd stay away personally. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny you mention about the player with no hamstrings. He'd have he'd have loved the Billy uh, Billich era, uh, hamstring central that was. <laughs> And uh, 
you're funny, we, we mentioned about him fitting right in at Watford with his injury record. Ben mentioned earlier in our group chat when this news broke that we'd made a bid for this um, forward with championship experience. He said, Charlie Wyke. And I said, it'd be just our luck to go and sign a player that literally almost died. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's typical. Um, as I say, we are joined by Ryan tonight. And I can say that Ryan is with us now. Um, thank you very, very much for joining tonight, Ryan. How are you, mate? You all good? Yeah, thanks for having me on. All good. Thank you, mate. Um, school summer holiday, so kids are annoying me, as uh, is to be expected, but uh, we're all good. We're all good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To be expected, I think. Um, we're Obviously, <laughs> Blackburn Rovers up next for Watford. I think the first question I want to ask is, Last season, you finished seventh. You finished outside the playoff spots on goal difference in the end. Um, Sunderland just creeping in. You had an FA Cup quarter final as well. Um, so throw that in the mix. How gutting, firstly, was that to miss out on the playoffs? And did you believe that you know it was going to be your time again and, and get into the playoffs and give it a stab? Yeah, it was really good. And I mean, first thing to say, it was a real surprise to be up there because uh, I had us down in 15th. I think I had us down in the pre-season prediction because, you know, it was uh, a lot of movement with Tony Mowbray leaving the club and a new manager coming in and not really knowing, you know, how he was going to cope at championship level. But, you know, to be in the playoffs and, and in that top six for I can't remember how many days it was, 200 odd days, I think it was that we're in the top six. I've heard a lot of Blackburn fans say, oh, no one expected us to be up there. But when you're in there, you know, for that long and towards the end of the season as well, to not make it and not make it on the final day due to goal difference to a Tony Mowbray side, just everything combined. And it was really, really gutting. And I think loads of Rovers fans can pinpoint probably three or four games where that extra point that gets us over the line, um, you know, Coventry at home when the goalkeeper scores an equaliser and the Preston away game, the next game uh, where we conceded right at the death in the 95th minute. They're two games that really, really stick out. But um, yeah, it was a nice surprise. It was a nice season, but ultimately a bit gutting, but a really enjoyable season, it's got to be said. You you mentioned John Doe Thomason coming in there and you mentioned you exceeded expectations. Uh, there was a bit of sort of uncertainty in the summer, wasn't there? Do you reckon he's mm. still the right man to carry you forward? Yeah, definitely. Um, what we have seen in these first three games of the season, the way that he wants to play is really imprinted on this side now. Um, it's kind of the fashionable thing to do at this point, isn't it? You know, inverted fullbacks and all of that type of stuff playing out from the back. You know, he's really imprinted that at us and we've got a definite style and a, a definite pattern to our play. Really comfortable playing it out from the back. And for a side like Rovers, we've got to be greater than the sum of our parts because, you know, we are far from the Premier League in terms of finances and revenue and all of those things. So the players that we do have, the academy lads that we have got coming through, we've got to outcompete. We've got to be greater than the sum of our parts. And, and Thomason, for me, is the right man to do that, just from what I've seen, just with that style of play, that pattern of play, and the fact that he's not afraid to bring in the academy youngsters um, I can't remember how many we've already seen this season. I think it's eight or nine, I think, from the academy with the League Cup game and things. And we've got the record, I think, in the Football League at the moment. It's something like 600-odd games where we've had a lad from the academy in the starting 11. So Thomason has been really true to that academy, which is our lifeline, you know, with, with all the financial state of the club. We've got to use that academy. So, yeah, Thomason is the right man for the job and keeping him happy is is the main challenge at the moment. Yeah, he's, he's been dealt a, a bit of a, a tougher hand this season. You've lost two quite sort of figureheads at the club. Brereton Diaz going to, to Villarreal and, uh, and Bradley Dack, we were just speaking about before you joined then. He's gone to link up with ex-manager Tony Mowbray at Sunderland. How it might be, you know, hard to, to answer this because we're only three games in. But how big a blow has that been to the squad? Is it is it clear to see three games in, or uh, are you sort of waiting for that to hit? Is it uh, it's very clear to say uh, to see three games in, particularly the last game that we just played, Hull at home. Um, we need to be more clinical in front of goal, uh, and we certainly need to either replace Brereton Diaz or bring in another attacker who's going to be able to contribute at this level. Um, 
you know, Hull, we went down to 10 men and, and played the most of that game with 10 men on Saturday. But at 1-1, we had three or four chances where we should be putting them away. Opening game of the season, Harry Leonard's missed a couple of chances as well. So being clinical in front of goal and taking our chances and being a threat are the things that we're going to have to do this season. And Brereton Diaz in particular brought that to the party, particularly in the first half of seasons. He seemed to wane a little bit going into the second half, but you know his ability to change a game, run at a defence, put a team on the back foot, you know, that's the stuff that, that we are going to miss as far as Brereton Diaz is concerned. And and with Bradley Dack, you know, even with his injuries that he had and, and the fact that he wasn't the same player, particularly after the second injury, he was still the best finisher at the football club. So, you know, it's a lot of goals that you're taking out of the side without necessarily replacing them. And you're asking a lot of the likes of, of Harry Leonard. You're asking a lot of Niall Ennis, who's coming in from Plymouth and stepping up to championship level. And you're asking a lot, even though it shouldn't be a big ask because he was a £5 million striker, but you're all of a sudden asking Sam Gallagher as well to be, you know, a 15, 20 goal each season striker. So, yeah, um, the answer to your question is we are missing them, particularly in the early part of the season. And it remains to be seen if we can get someone in on loan or, or maybe bring in another signing with some of the money that we have generated. Uh, just looking at your incomings, you, you've sort of gone for some more niche markets with Sondra Tronstad and Arna Sigurdsson. Are you happy with the incomings? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, the first three that we brought in um, were really needed, uh, quick fire. So I think they all came in before the 15th of June or, or something along those lines. So the head of recruitment set himself a target to bring in the three sign-ins and, and he brought them in. Uh, obviously, Thomason being a, a Scandinavian manager um, who has knowledge of Scandinavia um, and with him now imprinting this formation and this pattern of play on the side, players like Tronstad and Sigurdsson in particular, you know, stand out as players that are going to slot into that system. In terms of Tronstad, um, we were crying out for some experience in the centre of the park, um, you know. Adam Wharton, John Buckley, Lewis Travis, uh, and then last season when we had Tyler Morton on loan, all young lads in their early 20s. And at championship level, you just need that grit. You need that experience. So Tronstad will bring that. Sigurdsson's a bit of an ace in the hole. You know, we've just been talking about Brereton Diaz and what he brought to the table, that little bit of the unexpected and putting a team on the back foot. When Sigurdsson is fit, I think that's what we're expecting of him, just his ability to unlock a game and, and make something happen, probably from the left-hand side, but in a different way to Brereton Diaz, where he was one that's going to drive and run at a defence. I think Sigurdsson is going to be someone who's going to be a bit cuter, maybe find a pass, maybe get himself in a position to score. So, yeah, I think there are a couple of good signings. And um, Niall Ennis, the other one, uh, doesn't look fit at the moment, if I'm being honest. Uh, I think he's enjoyed... Plymouth's promotion party uh, a little bit shall we say but he's shown some flashes you know in the games that he's come off the bench he can certainly hold the ball up he can bring others into play and I think when he is fully fit I think he's going to be a threat for us in in that attacking third uh, and then the final sign in Walsh step the goalkeeper he's just going to provide competition for Ainsley Pairs because I was personally gutted when um, Thomas Kaminsky went to your big rivals um, you know it was it was a shame that he did uh, but no one begrudged him the move. Um, so Walsh Stett will come in and he's going to be a, another ball-playing goalkeeper, if that makes sense, in in the mould that John Dole Thomason wants to play. But four is not enough signings, so hopefully we can bring in some more. But we're happy with the business so far. Sounds uh, sounds familiar. We, we could do with one of them ball-playing goalkeepers as well. Um, <laughs> just before I, I, I ask my next question, you mentioned our rivals, so we're going to mention your rivals. Ben, our host, has actually asked a questionnaire about how did it feel when your arch rivals Burnley won the championship at Ewood <laughs> Park? Uh, are, you, are you jealous with how they've performed in the last 10 years? Are we years? trying to scare them off? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Ben. <laughs> Uh, jealous but also respectful so um, you know I particularly admired what Sean Dyche did at Burnley because you know rivalry aside um, clubs like Burnley and clubs like Luton I'm sure you'll admit this as well it gives everyone hope doesn't it that it's not about parachute payment money all the time it's not about just coming down and being the top dog Burnley when they got their first promotion came from nowhere Luton have come from nowhere and I think it gives hopes to, uh, to clubs like Blackburn that you know, we can go up eventually if we do things right off the pitch. So 
uh, as much as yes, it's obviously <laughs> jealousy in, in terms of seeing what they're achieving. I do have a massive amount of respect for what Burnley have done and what they've achieved. And and in answer to that first question, well, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? To to win the title at your rivals, um, you know, like Burnley have achieved the peak there. So Rovers have somehow got to get their own back at some point in my lifetime because that just doesn't get top, does it? So that was a horrible feeling. And we played really well that night, to be fair, Rovers. We played really, really well. Um, and it was just a smashing goal from Burnley to win it. And fair play to him. But um, yeah, respectful. I am respectful. They've, they've done a good job. Mm. Uh, and looking ahead to, to our game now, that, that's that's why we're here. Um, you know, it's uh, it's it, I, I think it's going to be a, a really good game, to be honest. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm feeling a bit positive about it. Who would you sort of highlight as, as your danger man? Who should Watford fans or Watford in general, who should we be looking out for from your side? Now, now that Diaz, I know it can be a bit lazy when, you know, you sort of point to the figurehead player. I mean, we had it for so long. We'd ask people and they'd be like Troy Deeney, Ismail Asar, Jal Pedro. But now that you sort of bigger name players have gone, who would you sort of point out? Yeah. Uh, there's three that are coming to mind for me. So uh, the first one, Sami Smodic. Um, he has really stepped up as as a senior player, someone who's going to grab games by the scruff of the neck and and someone who's going to guide this young group. So he's one who will be happy to receive the ball in the tight areas in that final third. He'll be looking to get on things. He'll be looking to make things happen. So wouldn't surprise me if Sami Smodic um, popped up with a goal on Sunday. Um, so he's the first one. Second one is Adam Wharton, who's just a, a special, special talent. And I'm really pleased that we've got him on the five-year contract that we have because we will sell him eventually. He is destined for the Premier League, hopefully with us. Um, but if it's not with us, we're going to be able to get a good transfer fee for him, hopefully along the lines of you know Alex Scott um, mm -hmm. and the, fact, the price that he's just gone for. And, and that's critical for us to generate that cash. Um, you know, we can't allow the Bren Brereton Diaz situation to happen again or Daryl Enahan, you know, losing players on a free. It just can't happen. But Adam Wharton is a very, very confident footballer. He will absolutely take the ball in the centre of the park. He'll look to take people on. He'll receive it off the defence and, and everything will go through him uh, if he starts on Sunday. And then the other one um, uh, is Joe Rankin Costello, who's just very, very much a John Dahl Thomason player now in terms of he will ghost all around the pitch from the right back area. So with that inverted fullback system that JDT plays, uh, we'll revert to a kind of back three with uh, Dom Hyam, Hayden Carter, and probably Callum Britton now that Harry Pickering suspended. They'll operate as a back three to really allow Joe Rankin Costello to get forward and, and be an attacking presence. And he did start his career off as an attacking player. So he's more of an attacker at right back now, but he's very, very dangerous from those areas. And, I think it was last season against Huddersfield. He had seven shots from right back, which was just a nonsense. So he will be a threat that will look to ghost in. So I don't know who's on your left-hand side. You know, they might just need to watch out for JRC ghosting in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, about that. Um, <laughs> our, our only fit left-back walked off injured last week. So At least Ngakia oh. can't get skinned by Brereton Diaz. He's still <laughs> recovering from that game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, let's flip that one round. Who or what about Watford are you sort of afraid of coming up against? Uh, Tom Ince, because Rovers always just have this ability for players like Tom Ince, you know, rediscovering their careers and things. You know, has he scored yet for you? Because if he hasn't, uh, he'll get his first goal. Yeah. Amazing. So it'll be a point. <laughs> it'll be someone like that Tom Ince just to come in and get his first goal and have a worldy performance um, it'll be a little bit like that but you know what I was looking at your squad just before um, just before we came live on this and you're looking kind of a mixture of players at the moment aren't you where in the past I think you've had the real threat of like Hal Pedro and, and obviously Saar and other players like that and before that Troy Deeney I was just looking at your squad it seems to be a, a good mixture of just Maybe a bit like Rovers, not players who you're kind of jumping out and thinking, oh, God, they're on their day. They're going to batter us. I think, you know, you are a, a good combination of players in that sense. So, but it's the superstition in me that just says someone like Tom Ince or someone who hasn't scored their first goal for Watford will get their first goal for Watford. Not who I would have picked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that means Bio's definitely bagging a hat trick now. We've just been slagging him off like you wouldn't believe. But, uh, we'll, uh... We'll see. 
I mean, in terms of the game itself, how, how are you feeling about it? I'm going to throw this out there now. Last time I, I threw a stat out uh, was last week against Stoke and we lost. So this might work in your favour. But I don't know <laughs> if you knew this, Ryan, but um, Blackburn haven't won at Vicarage Road since 2001. Um, wow. So how, how are you feeling heading into the game? Um, yeah, again, I was having a little think about this before we um, before we came live on this because I'll I'll be honest, you know, I obviously saw that you won four nil on the opening day, and then I kind of just assumed that you'd carried on the form and would be up there. And then when I had a look and seen what you'd done, I was quite surprised actually to see that you hadn't scored and you know and, and hadn't had the good results. So that filled me with a little bit of confidence, but. You know, Rovers, I think away from home, we can be a bit patchy. And I think some of these Sky games, we can be a little bit, you know, not play to the cameras, so to speak. So I'm expecting a really tough game. And I think across the three games that we've played in the league this season, we have had some struggles in those games. We started dreadfully. Um, well, after a good 15 minute spell, really, when we missed the penalty, but we were dreadful in the first half away at Rotherham in our first away game of this season. And then... Obviously, the, the last game against Hull, um, I thought we started that game really bad as well. And then the first game at home to West Brom, we had to ride a little bit of a wave in the first 20 minutes. So I think if Watford can impose themselves on Sunday and really make Vicarage Road kind of a fortress and get on the front foot against Rovers in that first 20 minutes, it could be a long afternoon for us in, in that sense. But I think if it's nil-nil going beyond the first half of that first half. I think Rovers will grow in confidence and I think mm. we will carry on playing our style of play and we'll be happy to invite the press from you and then hopefully hit you on the break. So I think the first 20 minutes are going to be the crucial one for me and I think Watford on their day against anyone at Vicarage Road are a very dangerous side. So I think the first 20 minutes is key for me. Right. So I mean, we're asking everyone who's coming on here, give us your, your predictions. Who are your three teams to get promoted? To get promoted, uh, Southampton and Leicester, I think, are just shoe ins for me. I think they're just the money that they've generated just makes you sick, doesn't it? Because you can't even say, oh, but they're just using parachute payment money because they're not. Uh, I wish we could say that, but they're not. They're generating good cash, invested well, and they've got the academies as well, haven't they? So I think those two are shoe ins. Um, I'm not on the train with teams like Ipswich and Birmingham, you know, I'm, I'm not buying those. So, um, who else am I thinking? I think Leeds will probably come good and be there or thereabouts. I do think Middlesbrough will come good. Uh, so I'm going to say Middlesbrough through the playoffs. So Middlesbrough, Southampton, you? Leicester. Yeah. What about you? You three to go down. Three to go down. Sheffield Wednesday, I think. Um, they are... Rovers have been in this position when I think the off-field stuff is dominating in the way that it does. And I think particularly the championship this season looks especially competitive. I think you're going to get caught out and you're going to get found out. So I think Sheffield Wednesday, definitely. I think Rotherham, based on what I saw um, away when we played them, I think the lack of quality for them is going to catch up with them as well. As much as they did cause us problems in that first half, I'm looking at their squad and it doesn't feel like there's a lot of depth there for them. Uh, so I think they will struggle. Um, and I'm going to caveat QPR if they persist with Gareth Ainsworth they will go down mm. I just again I think that's going to catch up with him and I know that he's a jolly man he's a Blackburn fan as well and it makes me sick to say that they're going down with a Blackburn man at the helm but positive talking and being positive in post-match interviews doesn't keep you up so I think QPR uh, will be the third one yeah that's twice now uh, you're, you're the second person to say that bottom three and I think Cam didn't we all go that bottom three as well we, you know yeah I'm pretty sure I did yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I know what you mean. Uh, <laughs> Ainsworth said in that uh, post-match interview after the Watford game, he goes, we may have just played the league winners. We've not scored since the first half of that game. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that, that's going to be interesting. Uh, and then just back to the game itself again for the last question. What's your score prediction? Uh, I'm going to fancy Rovers to ride that little wave. As I said, I think we'll we'll stand firm in that first 20 minutes. Um, and we, we did do that in particular home to West Brom. So I fancy us to ride that. And I think a win will be too much for us. Um, but I think I'm going to say a two-all draw. I think it's going to be exciting. I think both sides are going to press each other, go for each other. And, and I think there's, there's going to be some gaps to exploit for both sides. So I'm going to say two-all. But I fancy Rovers to go 1-0 up. And maybe for you to peg us back. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we react if we go one nil down because uh, obviously we went one nil down on Saturday and sort of was trying to knock at the door, but we we weren't really getting an answer and we we just couldn't find that way into the back of the net, unfortunately. So it'll be interesting to see what happens if you do go one nil up. I'd imagine you'll uh, you, you'll be quite hard to break down, maybe a bit harder than it was to uh, to break down Stoke, but. Yeah, um, very. I uh, really appreciate you coming on tonight, Ryan. Really, uh, really, really appreciate the insight from uh, from how Blackburn are looking at it, and and to hear how how things are with Blackburn. Uh, are you just just quickly? Are you uh, are you going to the game on on Sunday? Sadly, not the the move of kickoff time because uh, it's just a nightmare, isn't it? Twelve p.m. on a Sunday. It's just yeah. yeah thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit crazy so, on TV though. Yeah, that's it. I, I had every intention of going down on the Saturday because that worked better. But yeah, the Sunday ruled it out. But uh, I managed Vicarage Road last season, which was great. Mm, yeah, well, like I say, thank you very, very much for coming on and uh, and chatting to us about Blackburn. And uh, other than the two games against us, we uh, we wish you all the best in in the season. And I'm sure we'll speak again when we're uh, when we're due to play at Ewood Park. Yeah, no worries, and likewise to you as well. All right, take care, Ryan. Thanks ever so much. See you later. Bye. Cheers. Bye. So there we go. Ryan's take on Blackburn Rovers visiting Vicarage Road. He uh, it sounded quite positive, to be honest, Cam. I mean, uh, for for me, I, I would worry if we were to go one 0 down. You know, we we really struggled against Stoke. I mean, we come out the second half, we come out the traps so quick, and I was really impressed actually. But we just could not find a way to get the ball into the back of the net. Um, and I worry, and this is no disrespect to Stoke, but I worry about um, how we'd find trying to break down Blackburn. And, you know, we, we struggled to do that against Stoke. Um, do you, how are you feeling about the game itself? Well, I, just to caveat what you said, I think mm. we, we did have quite a few chances against Stoke. And if the decision-making was a little bit better... If Yasser showed a bit of quality in front of goal for once, then maybe we, we get a point or even a win out of that. But mm. Blackburn game in general, yeah, I I think I'd back us playing at home. I, I said this in the last podcast, you know, I, I said the fact that we're playing at home, I, I do feel a bit more confident. It's almost like we can play our stamp, like we can really stamp our authority considering we're at home and we can really see that that fast tempo, that sort of pressing, like we we expected under Valerian Ishmael. You can really see that that football, that brand, that style that he's trying to do come off at home. You know, we've played away at Stevenage. I didn't go. Ben went and he said, like, we, we just look like we, we don't know what we're doing. And then it wasn't the sort of same, you know, style of play against Stoke than it was against QPR and Plymouth. So maybe home is where we're going to find a lot of our joy this season. And to be honest, I, I don't mind that. Obviously, I want us to pick up points on the road. But that lockdown season, the fact that we had such a good home season, I, 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 it was buzzing. And at the end of the day, it's, it's your home ground. You know, if you turn up to your home ground and it's rocking, you know, we, we'll have a we'll have a fun season if we can get the Vic rocking again. That's 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 what we want basically. Um, in terms of changes, obviously, we only saw one change against Stoke. We saw Jake Livermore come in for the injured Sierra Elta. I've not actually read anything to, to see if Sierra Elta's, you know, back available yet. I don't know if you've read anything, Cam, but no, what, what changes, if any, would you make going into the Blackburn game? Yeah, I'd actually make a couple, I think, because, well, first, I'd get someone out of the crowd to play in goal. But um, <laughs> we might have to make a change at left back, might we? Because... If James Morris can't make it, you've got to put Ken there, I think. Yeah, it, it can only be Ken you, yeah. if someone's going to fill in. And I, I must say, listen, I, I don't think he had his best game on Saturday, bless him, but uh, I must say he looked more comfortable playing at left-back than he did over on that right where he initially started. Yeah, I thought that. And then you've got to put someone in on the right. I, I feel like he's really reluctant to play Yasser from the off, so it might be Tom Ince that we see, but I'd put Yasser in. Yeah, I, I don't know if he would put Tom in because it, it, it wasn't long ago, you know, uh, people that went to the Junior Hornets day, there was all that talk about Tom Ince said he was a couple of weeks beyond the rest of the squad. We obviously only saw him come on, what was it, the last 10 minutes against Stoke, if that. 
Um, so whether he'd start him, uh, you know, just because he's started him, it's not to say he'll play the full 90 minutes. But, uh, you know, I'd like him to to get more game time soon. And the only way he's going to get match fit is playing a few minutes here and there and, and building it up from there. Um, I mean, if it was me, like you, I would go with Yasser from the off. Um, would you be tempted to throw Chat for Dadsy in the mix? Um, I don't think Martin's had his best game against Stoke. No. But I don't know. Keep out is I like Georgie as sort of an impact off the bench late on. There is one more change I'd consider. Yeah. I when and you know what I think of him. I, I don't rate him at all. But when KMB came on, he looked a lot more assured with the ball than Livermore did. So yeah, even, I want to see KMB play further forward this season if he does play. Mm-hmm. But maybe for now. If Sear out is not ready, I'd put KMB in that number six role. Yeah, Livermore, like you, you can tell he's you know, he's obviously got bags of experience, but he almost slows the game down, you know. You I I, I still it sticks in my memory that game against Crystal Palace in pre-season where we were through, I think three on three, and he just stopped <laughs> and basically yeah. waited for Palace to retreat. And I'm like, come on, mate, like we we, we were on for a counter attack then. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think KM may look good. Like yourself, I'd much rather see him play further forward. Um, he, he come on when when did he come on and he played further forward? It was against Crystal Palace in the friendly, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And we were sort of saying he, he looked half decent then. Um, one question I want to ask you actually, because we I had this conversation with Ben in the last podcast. In terms of the the, the midfield too, obviously losers going to be playing. We we know that losers, you know, if he if he wants it and if he tries hard enough and gives a big enough crap, he can be Watford's main man this season. So he will definitely be starting. Who would you partner next to him? Would you partner Deli Bashiru or would you go for Kone? Because I felt like Deli Bashiru was a bit of a passenger the last couple of games. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing for him that he's back and, you know, touch woods. He doesn't get any more bad injuries because, boy, he's had a lot of bad injuries and he's just got rotten luck. But for me... I don't know whether it's because we, we, he's playing next to loser and we're perhaps trying to compare the two, but for me, it's just a bit bland. You know, there isn't really anything there. He, he doesn't get bums off seats. He doesn't get stuck in and, you know, does the dirty work. So would I think Kone is better on the ball, personally. If you watch Tom Deli, the, mm. the ball does go through him a lot. There's a lot of... Um... You know, we, we pass it to him a lot from the centre-backs and then he has the chance to pass it forward. I do think against Stoke he was pretty ano- anonymous, but I he did a lot of sort of unnoticed work against Plymouth, I thought. Hmm. I wouldn't hate to keep him in. I've not been too impressed by Ishmael Kone, but okay. we need a bit more bite in there, I think, and you know, a bit more mobility. Need some uh, something off the ball, sort of. To you know, we need to win the ball back a bit quicker. I think. Mm. Would you Would you be tempted to to go in for another centre mid in this transfer window? Because I was saying in the, the the last episode that you know sometimes when you've got a bit of a, a Rolls Royce of a midfielder, a bit of a flashy player in in the form of loser, it can sometimes help to have that midfielder that ain't afraid to get stuck in and do the dirty work and you know play ugly sometimes. Do you, do you think? We're all right in that position, or would you be tempted to get another player in? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be my priority, but I'd love mm-hmm. to see another centre mid come in. And I did see that Coventry are in for Alex Mowat, who's expected to leave West Brom. Worked sure. with Ishmael before; was very mm-hmm. good under Ishmael. So I'd yeah. definitely have some consideration. Well, he took him to uh, to West Brom from Barnsley, didn't he? So yeah. Um, yeah, potentially, you know, he, he, he's certainly someone I wouldn't turn my nose up at. Uh, ben has said that he would make two changes, Kone for Deli Bashiru and Chak for Morris, meaning playing Ken at left wing back. So that will be an interesting one. Um, Is that I, mean you put Chak Vitadzi on the right wing? Well, that's what I was just going to say, unless you unless he was putting Morris over on the right wing and putting Chak over on the left. Um for me, I, I like I say, you know, I, I would probably look to play Yasser from the off and, and keep Martins there. Um, Chak has been very good at, at coming on and, and 
getting at players. He, like I said, you know, he reminds me of Forestieri, just in terms of his flair and the, the excitement. You know, he gets a ball and you, he gets bums off seat. So I'm, uh, I'm all for that. I really am. Uh, and you're you're going to the game on on Sunday, aren't you? Yep. Are you going? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Um, what's your score prediction? Ooh. I'm gonna say we get a two-one win. I reckon. Yeah, I was going to say two-one, not to be boring, but I, I was going to say two-one as well. I'll uh, I'll have a think about who might score. I've gone a bit outlandish a couple of times recently. I said that we'd beat Stoke two-one. I think I said that Morris and Bio were going to score, but wow. Morris Morris needs to Bio. not Morris, sorry, uh, Andrews and Bio. Oh. Um, but Andrew Andrews needs to understand that he doesn't need to take a bastard touch every time he gets <laughs> ball on the edge of the box. It's so frustrating. He did it twice against Stoke. Sometimes you just got to eat him. Put your foot through it. Don't take it. So age. Well, yeah. Listen, look. At the end of the day, he's a kid, isn't he? You know. He's he's learning his trade and he's um, he's he's doing well. I mean, uh, not not to open this kind of worms, but I don't think Saturday was his best game I've seen in a Watford shirt. But listen, he'll have these games. Some games he'll be great. Some, some games he'll be crap. But that's that's all part of, of being a professional footballer and, and working your way through. Uh, a couple of things I need to mention before we we end the uh, end the live. Firstly, thank you if you've if you've watched or if you're watching back or if you're listening on the podcast. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, next week, we are going... Ben, just before we I say what I was going to say, Ben is saying that he would have Chuck Vedadze on the right and Martins on the left. So that would be interesting. Uh, we will see what happens come 11 a.m. on Sunday when the team sheet is, is announced. Um, but yes, the Blackburn Rovers review... Uh, on Sunday, we're doing it. We're doing it the, the night of the, the game. Uh, so we're not going to wait till Monday. We'll be back on Sunday evening at quarter to eight. It's a bank holiday. So no work the next day. So I'm sure some beers or drinks will be flowing from whoever's on. Um, we are. That's going to be on YouTube only. So if you're watching this on Facebook, you'll, you'll be searching for ages. We're only going to be doing it on YouTube. Um, so make sure you head over to the YouTube and not sound like a broken record, but if you don't already hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well. And then if you subscribe, if you hit the bell button, that notifies you every time we go live. So you don't have to look out for my 27 million updates whilst we're going live to say that we're live. Uh, it'll be on your phone already. So yeah, uh, just a reminder, we will not be going live on Facebook on Sunday. It will be on YouTube only. Uh, of course, then it will be out as a podcast on the Monday as per, but if you're hoping to watch live here on YouTube only. Um, and secondly as well, um, it's that time of year where the Football Content Awards uh, is, is around. At the moment, they're in the stage for the nomination. So this is before any voting takes place. Um, and we would love it if you could vote for us. Um, voting closes, I believe, on Monday the 4th of September. So all you need to do is head over to the Football Content Awards website and there will be an option where you can vote or nominate. And it's any any category you, you, you feel fit, really. Uh, best podcast, um, best uh, live content, best content creator. Uh, so whatever category you choose, just type the Voices of the Vic into the Football League box because on every category, it's got Premier League, uh, Football League and then non-league. So make sure you pop our name into the Voices of the Vic. Uh, I will post a link out on our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at some stage as well. Uh, so if you could do that, we would really, really appreciate it. Uh, not really expecting to, to get anywhere with it, but it would be great if... Uh, a cheeky email slid into the, the the inbox and said you've been nominated. You know that'd be a that'd be a good piss up that would, uh, and it'd be good to win the award. Obviously, um, no match day vlog this weekend either. I don't think. I think the next one that you can expect will be Coventry. Uh, I'm going to carve. Cam's going to carve. Uh, I think Katie's going to carve as well, um, and Joe and Ben aren't going. So that will be the next next match day vlog as well. 
Um, but yeah, that's uh, that, that's it for this week. Thank you very much for joining me, Cameron. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. I absolutely have, yeah. Good stuff. Uh, and like I say, we'll be back on Sunday evening to talk about, hopefully, a Watford win. Um, but till then, stay safe and come on, you ones. <laughs>